Well, hello and welcome to another episode, a special episode of VM End to End, a show where we have a reformed VM skeptic and a VM enthusiast hash things out. Um, the reason why I'm so excited about this episode is because, you know, I have Brian with me. Hi, Brian. Hello, hello. And that's it. It's me and Brian. We're going back to day one, back to how it started. I I'm digging this. It's been a while. It has been a while. So, Brian, what are we talking about today? I want to talk about spot instances. Which are? <laughs> okay, so they're, they're essentially a, a discount, a, a big discount. Um, and I don't know, like, like all things in technology, there's a, a trade-off. Um, so for workloads where they can be stopped, um, you can get a really large discount, somewhere between 60 and 90% off the on-demand instance prices. Didn't, didn't we already have those, like with the preemptible VMs? <laughs> yeah, so in, in fact, these are the, yes, you're totally right. These are kind of the, the next generation of preemptible machines. So um, in, in fact, they're a superset. So in, anything you know about preemptible machines is true, except um, they no longer expire after 24 hours. All right. Well, I mean, discounts are always good. I, yeah, I, I'm a fan of discounts always. Um, I feel like there's a catch with this. I don't know why. <laughs> so, like, how come, like, people should just use this all the time is my guess. Like, uh, in fact, we were just talking to Emma last episode, and she was running basically her machines for four months to calculate pi. That was expensive. Could she have used this to maybe cut down on cost? Yeah, I think that's a good example of where not to use this, actually. Um, I think, I'm not an expert on that uh, scenario, but you know, the most of the machines are being used kind of live as disks all the time. And I think they probably need to be available all the time for that full four months. So for a scenario like that, or like a database, um, this is not a great, great fit. Um, where it is a, a good fit is for any, any kind of workload that can be restarted. Uh, that you can stop it and pick it back up. So whether that's a queue of individual things that need doing or um, a batch kind of thing that you can break up into parts and have a bunch of machines work on and then all finish um, or you know something that's got a, a checkpointing kind of built in or, or what have you. Um, anything where that's uh, true and you know, you're know you okay with a, a pause in the work, um, this is a really good, good fit for. And you, know, you can get a really large discount. I think it's the biggest discount we offer anywhere on the VMs. Yeah, you said 60 to 90%. Yeah. Like that's huge. Off. That's huge. 60 to 90% off. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's okay. I hate to be skeptical because that's that's a great discount. I will love it. I would love to use it. But if I was trying to calculate like how much I'm putting out in expenses, that 60 to 90% range is it's big. So what's what's happening there? Like how does that work? So at a high level, we're um, we're trying to make better use of the the data centers that we've built. So you know we're you know in our normal on demand instances, you know you want to be able to run them for four months straight and not be interrupted and have everything work. You want to have machines available when you ask for them, um, all that sort of thing. And we strive to have really you know high SLOs and you know have things be very reliable and available and ready to go. Um, in order to do that, you end up kind of building more than, than are getting used at any given moment. So there's kind of this extra um, that you can't give the same guarantees about. So we want to be want to be upfront about that, let people take advantage of that. And when you have a workload that is a fit for it could be stopped, then you know run it there. Um, so that's that's generally true, I think, in in lots of clouds. So the, but then to the 60 to 90 percent thing, which is a, a big range. So um, the pricing is per zone and fixed for a whole month. So uh, where it is in that range will be stable for a month. So if you've got, you know, what have you, like it's 60% this month and, you know, 80% next month and 90% the next or something like that, right? In zone, you know, US Central 1A or something like that, right? Um, the, but, you know, pressures change the, you know, how busy or not the zones are changes over time. So we want to be able to uh, adjust that number so that it kind of works best for, sorry, for everyone, you know, so we're not having everybody try to run in this exact same place. So you get a kind of a better experience and, and that sort of thing. So um, 
And, you know, that does imply some kind of extra work, um, you know, if and is not always available in all use cases. So some things you could just easily run in a different place. Maybe if you're kind of just doing some calculation off of a, a work queue of some kind, that could run anywhere. If you have data locality, kind of specific reasons or, you know, like other data you're working with, um, that's the same thing, uh, then, you know, you may be kind of like less flexible on that. So you'll at least get the 60% uh, off everywhere. And that's a lot and a, and a good place to start. But if you want to kind of maximize it, you'll probably have to do a little bit of extra checking either manually or with a script every month to see kind of where the prices land. I mean, for, for 60 to 90 percent, I'm willing to do some extra work. That's that's some big savings. Um, my question is that once a month thing that, you know, once a month, that that periodic checking that you're doing to, to move things around. Um, yep. What, what is it? What is it involved? Like, am I going into a UI and, and pushing a button and saying this is one of the VMs that can die at any moment? So you, you, you can look that up um, in our price catalog and kind of check that out. But like the like, where do you do this? Like, you know, how does, you know, what does it look like? How do you, how do you create these machines? That sort of thing. That feels like the, uh, m my favorite question in technology of what is it? You know, so we talked about what the benefits are and workloads and that sort of thing, but like, no, like, what is this? So the cool thing is it's, it's just a VM. This is a, a regular VM and the spot or not is an annotation that you add to the creation of the VM. And it, kind of lives long term. So it's a policy that's applied to the VMs. Uh, and it works for, you know, all of our regular VMs and and the different combinations and all of the different shapes and cool stuff we talked about uh, before all applies. Um, so you can do that, you know, via the, the web console. You can do it via the command line, via the API. Uh, you can do it in the template part of a managed instance group. Uh, anywhere you create a VM, you, you know, you should be able to do that, in including, um, you know, GKE, uh, kind of node pool creation. The other question I have is, how do you know which zone to move your workload to? Is there like, is there an API to find that? Is there a list somewhere? Yeah, so there's a price list that you can look at online, or there's a pricing catalog API um, that will show you what the current prices are, and that will change month to month. Um, you know, we're looking at things to you know make this process you know a little smoother over time, but right now you you essentially have to look it up either manually or via an API. Yeah, call. that's pretty straightforward. I can't get mad at that. Um, the, the thing that I am a little concerned about, um, so this is designed to offer, you know, to basically better utilize resources on both people's parts, save money for customers, uh, better utilize VMs for Google. And so these VMs can shut down at any point. You said, well, how do you test or simulate that? Like, how do you, how do you, like, as a developer, how do you actually work with that and make sure everything's good? Right. How do you, how do you know that you're responding to it properly? Um, so the the cool thing is that we're you know essentially just stopping the VM, and so you can simulate it by calling the the API to stop a VM, uh, and the normal thing will happen. Um, and that normal thing is that you know we we give a very short but should be good for most applications uh, kind of early warning, and then shut the machine off. So there's a you know a 50 to 60 second kind of uh, heads up that comes through to the to the VM, and then it's actually kind of like power switched off, uh, lo logical power switch, right? Um, so, uh, so what you can do is set up a hook script that that listens for that uh, that alert and do whatever cleanup you need to do, close files, you know, maybe mark a job as not done. Or you know whatever the, whatever the work needs to be done to kind of smoothly uh, finish that out. And like you say, if you want to test it, if you want to do you know some chaos monkey style stuff against your your machines and like shut them down randomly, that will simulate this uh, behavior. So then the the question I have is this is actually taking me back to my Kubernetes roots, you know, uh, where there was a lot of fungible objects that weren't exposed weren't supposed to be long lived. And that caused problems trying to manage and find and work with those. So they created services and basically a, a stable endpoint you can put in front of these fungible objects. How does this work like with these like VMs? Like if I want to actually reach one and do something with it, how do you how do you manage or work with that? Yeah. So let's hold that thought. Uh, because there's a the the main use cases are not exactly lined up with that, but uh, but there's a, a thing we can poke at to do it. The 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 most common workloads 
are doing, um, you know, kind of a work, a task, kind of list of tasks. So kind of like um, if you were transcoding videos, you know, and you, um, you know, wanted to have a list of videos that needed transcoding, that's a really heavy task. So you probably wouldn't do it in serverless. It takes a long time. Um, but also each video is its own thing. And so as long as it finishes, it's done. And if it doesn't finish, you just do it on another machine, right? So this is a really good fit for this. So you might have a work queue and you start a VM to do each, each transcode, right? That would be a good fit. So you got this queue worker kind of thing. Um, the other pattern that's really common is a pool of workers that are long lived and they pull from a queue or, you know, uh, a list of things to do. So it's, it's kind of just like whether you create a new one to do each work or whether you have a long lived pool. Um, but often there's a queuing system of some kind involved because it makes the job tracking a lot easier, the restartability. Um, now, and and the the pool you might actually run as a managed instance group. So you know all of your regular compute engine, you know, kind of tools apply. So you can make a managed instance group that is made up of spot instances as and as the template already has this spot annotation, and so it will try to create spot instances and. When they shut down, they'll be removed from, you know, say a load balancer or removed from the work, and then they will be recreated, you know, at whatever the pool settings are. So if you have the managed instance group set to try to run 10 VMs, it'll it'll sit there and retry. If the if they get shut down, it'll try to be running that 10 all the time. Okay, that's really cool, and that that's actually similar in some ways to the GK thing we talked about. Um, was that the tie-in you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, but there's this kind of corner case where like if your whole pool is spots and they could be shut down at any time, you might not have something there to respond on the other end. So what you can do if you if you do have this scenario where you like say you've got an API that needs to be up all the time, but you also want to take advantage of spot, is you could run two managed instance groups, one made up of on demand, probably much smaller. Maybe it's your kind of like baseline, and then one made up of spot. Uh, is your kind of turbo mode or what have, what have you, right? And they both live behind the same API. So you can, you know, count on there being some machines up and people will get a response. But, you know, in best case scenario, it's faster or like, you know, the transcodes happen faster or what have you. Like, I don't know what we're going to do next in the future, but I hope we get to work or do something like that because that's, I want to know how to like build that. That's cool. Um, I did have a question, speaking of these queues and the workers, um, if you have these VMs, do you have yeah. any... Uh, like kind of guarantee of how long they're going to be up for or nope I'm, I'm just shaking my head here but that, like that's that's the trade-off to this is that when you when you create one of these uh vms it could get shut down at any time um and and that's the the the, the design trade-off for this um including pretty much right away like you start it and it gets shut down right away now normally you know they'll run for quite a while um but you need to be ready for them to turn off at, at any you know, moment. I think it's a fair trade-off though for the, the 60 to 90% off. Wow. So again, you've done it again. You've convinced me. I want to go try this. I want to go see how it works. I want to maybe make two separate management groups and see what happens. So how do I get started? The real place to start is actually on your team. So not even like technology-wise about like Google Cloud or anything, but look around at the workloads you have and see... Are there already workloads that are, you know, essentially kind of workers responding to a queue or very batch uh, oriented things that might be a, a good fit for this? Those are going to be the easiest to kind of translate over. And it's really worth looking at. Like you could save significant money and maybe you have to make a few changes or like add, you know, a restart somewhere or some extra logging. It's probably worth the time to do. Um, so look around and see what there are. And maybe you have some things that might be a little extra step, like this kind of two-stage thing we talked about uh, and decide whether that's worth doing um, and then try it out. Like, and you can kind of prove to yourself that it works just through the web console. Just, you know, uh, say this is going to be a spot instance or, you know, do it through uh, G Cloud. Try it out, see how it works. Check out the docs on how to respond to shutdowns and give it a try. Well, Brian, you, you haven't led me wrong yet. It's been two seasons, three now and counting. So... Uh, definitely going to do this. Thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, always, always, I always love it. I always love getting to do this with you. The likewise. The the thing. What about next week? What are we? Any any clues? Any giveaways? Yeah, no giveaways. But we will have a real guest. That's what I'll say.
not just me. You are a real guest. Thank you, though, for coming in, as always. And uh, if you're watching at home or on the bus, wherever you might be, thank you. Thank you.